Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video series about the toolkit panel maker. For those of you that don't know, the toolkit panel maker is a cross-platform application where you can create your own panels for Photoshop. But it's not limited to creating your own. You can also modify any of the panels that we provide or that any of our users provide. You can also share anything that you create with other Toolkit Panel Maker users. So it makes it really powerful and flexible. Uh, the intention of the series is to start very basic and then move more into advanced um, at the end. And hopefully then we will have covered everything that this tool has to offer. And you are an expert. Uh, in this specific episode, what I will show is how to modify an existing panel and how to create your own panel. And then in the new panel that you created, we will add a button that we link to an action. So it's not going to be super advanced, but a good start. And even if you know what I just said, I think it's very good to watch because there's a few tricks about um, the UI and how to operate. So let's get started. Um, most of the things are just drag and drop, which is very easy you don't have to it's pretty much standard in any mo modern application you can see where it's gonna end up uh, if you click on something then you get properties and these properties uh, for this particular button uh, color and name like so uh, if you noticed, we didn't change what happens when we click on the button, well, we, but we will get to how the linking works soon. Uh, if you want to modify a panel by deleting something, it's just as easy as drag and drop. With the difference is you drag it into empty space and let go. Now it's gone. And Let's remove a few things like so. Just make sure that you don't drag it into another panel because then you're just moving it. Uh, you should also know that there's no undo. So you need to utilize load, save, import and export. So you have your copies of the working versions if you do any big changes so to speak so in this case i haven't saved and i think i've destroyed this panel enough so let's just load and it's back okay enough about this one let's hide it i will go through what outline does in a later video it's quite powerful as well so now the next task is to create a new panel and have it show up inside of Photoshop. So what we do then is we find the new panel button up here. We click on it and we get a new panel. A trick uh, that I like to use is to uh, have the, the new panel I'm working with close to the left side because you're going to drag elements from the component toolbox when you design your layout. So if it's over here, you can understand a little bit much easier to have it over here. Um, and in this case, we only have one tab, but all panels have tabs. Uh, and you can have as many as you want. 
I'll show this in the next episode, I think. But if you prefer not to have a title here, you can clear out the name. And this blank space that you see here won't show up in Photoshop. So just just a little tip that's new, new feature, but also a very good beginner tip. So now we have two buttons and let's make one yellow and one red. And now we want to get it inside of Photoshop. So what do we do? Yes, we save it, of course. Otherwise Photoshop won't know it's there. And now when we enter Photoshop, there's no panels at all anywhere. To open a panel, you go to Window, Extensions, and now we find Toolkit number one, which is the one that we created. And now when I open this, it looks like this. And of course you can dock the panels if you want them docked, and you can have them minimized. So the panel we created is Toolkit one, that's why it says T1. So then you can have so. It's a little bit of a tip. Um, okay, so now we got the panel inside of Photoshop. And that's very cool, but the button doesn't do anything. So to give you a more realistic example than just linking menu items and such, um, I'm going to just quickly record an action. Uh, if you don't know how to actions work, don't worry about it because you can probably download millions of them online and you could also learn how to make them really easily if you want. Um, okay, so what do we want to do? We want to new black box. We want this action to create a new black box, which is just a square document. But you can see it's recording. So anything I do now will be recorded. So I just press new. I want some square dimensions and black as background. This These steps are not really important, but it's just have some example. I press stop because the action is done. And now I have to go back into toolkit. And as I said, the, the, the main thing on components here under elements is the UI. Everything here is UI. But there's three more tabs. So Command is how you link a button to do something. Icon is just decoration, and I'll show how that works later. Uh, and the different things that you can link to a button is Photoshop Actions, Photoshop Presets, the scripts that are placed in the toolkit, and all of our products come with these um, very nice scripts, but you can also download scripts online and place them here. Uh, we also have most of Photoshop's menu items av readily available right here, so you can link them. And okay, then. So, but we created an action and it's not here. That's because Toolkit doesn't know that we created an action in Photoshop. So what we need to do is communicate with Photoshop by pressing load from Photoshop. This will switch to Photoshop because it needs to talk to Photoshop and it can only do that by switching to it. But if we now go back to toolkit, you'll see it populated actions and presets. And we didn't create these brushes and tool presets and it was still empty. That's because it was the first time I loaded the panel maker. It, had, it never talked to Photoshop before. 
So whenever you want the panel maker to talk to Photoshop, you press load from Photoshop. Okay. So now let's make the yellow button open the black box. So this all you have to do is have it selected and you click. And now you can see on the left click here on the right side just below the color boxes, it says action, example, new black box. It is important though that you don't use very, very strange character names because it tries to run the action by the name. So it's just some tip not to use uh, really, really strange action names, but most work like all regular characters, um, even foreign characters. There's just a few special ones. Uh, there's a cool tip here as well. So, okay, we linked it now. So if we save and click on this button, it will run. But it still says button. And of course I could go here and just change the label. But if I double click on any action, it also changes the name which makes it very fast to assign things. So I said, this is now linked to the action, but let's also link uh, the other one to close. I double click on close and now I'm in Photoshop menu. So these are the menu items in Photoshop. And now we have our panel that we're happy with. So we save it. We go back to Photoshop. But it still says button. And if I try to click them, it says there's no left click. This is because we haven't loaded the new layout that we created yet. And to do that, you go to the top right menu that every panel in Photoshop has. Looks like sort of a hamburger. If you click on it and then say load layout, now we have the new layout. It says new black box and close. So now just to prove that it works, we press new black box. We get this new document with the size and we can close it. It's linked by name. So if I made cha make changes to the action, then the change will also happen to the button, which is uh, very good to know. So for example, if I say I want the dialogue and if I click new black box, it will ask me for the dimensions. And this time I might say white background. And I can close. So that's all I'm going to cover in this very first episode. In the next one, I'll go through more UI elements and how to make things um, look prettier. So see you in the next one. Thank you.